Kuski. Ace Jack on the button. 20 big blinds on the button. Sort of hand I feel very comfortable getting it all in with. That'll make it 125K. Sizes it up just a hair over the min raise. Trying to induce. King seven for Mateos in the big blind. Uh, would like to see a call, take a flop. That's what he does. Mateos and Makita, heads up. Oh boy. Jack 7-7. Seven, seven. Trips for Mateos. Jackson 7s for Makita. Both players clearly in their mindset thinking we've got it all. Makita is thrilled to have Ace Jack here. When in actuality he is crushed. Does have the Ace of Diamonds. Party Poker Team Pro is in some trouble. The down bet to 75K. But yesterday he didn't wear the sunglasses. Today he brought out the shades. He's going to need more than a pair of Rex specs to fight <laughs> his way out of this one. Real curious to see what Mateos does with trips. I would assume we just call. I would like that. He's going to go for the race. Makes it 210,000. This is war. Raise. Look at this. Announces raise. How much is the minimum? We've got a three bet. Wants to min pot. three bet. Yeah. <laughs> Just trying to induce. 345? Wants to make it 345,000. This is why Mateos' raise on the flop is. 345. So delicious. Ask for the minimum. These guys are just clicking buttons back and forth. That leaves Makita with 770,000 behind. Now we can just call with three of a kind, and here we go. Makita wondering, oh, I have the Ace of Diamonds. What is that is what I call unexpected from Makita Badzikowski. I'm not really that surprised to see Adrian Mateo's check raise with this monster flop for him. I'm not surprised to see Badzikowski C-bet on this board with pretty much anything he has. But look at what he just did, Jonathan. He just three-bet click back on this flop with 21 blinds to start the hand. Yeah, I am confused by this decision. This is not a decision I would have made. It's, not, it's honestly not a decision I would have considered. I think I would have moved in or I would have called. I think I would have called, actually, having the Ace of Diamonds in my hand. Um, afraid that there's too many gutters that Adrian's just going to have to fold. When being in position, I get to get it in on the turn really easily. Like if Adrian checks, I can bet. It's not a problem. If Adrian bets, I can move in or call all in or whatever right. it is. We're short enough that we can pretty much call any turn shove or bet yeah. and not really worry about it. Just close our eyes and call because, you know, we flop top, top with 21 blinds. Let's go. Yeah, and we, and we even block the nut flush. Draw. So right. if, a if a diamond comes, we have a draw, even if we're somehow behind, which we are right now. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty good. It seems like very odd to do this click back. What's the th why would he do it? I guess he's trying to induce from a draw or something like Seems that. Seems like it, right? Or he's trying to just get more money out of a jack and he thinks a jack will fold if he shoves. Um, but do you think a jack? I don't think a jack would fold if he shoved. I don't necessarily think a jack would. I also don't think Mateos is going to check raise a jack that often on the right. flop. I think he's just going to check call with a jack a lot of the time, which is the standard play. I think every time Mateos is check raising a jack, he is calling the shove when, when they're this short. Also, right. right? Like, that would be very strange to check raise fold a jack. 
Yeah, so this all feels very strange, yeah. and I don't know about it. What do you think about Mateos calling the three-bet versus moving in over the three-bet? I like that. That makes sense to me. Um, I would be a little concerned about losing my customer. He did this such a weird clickback thing. I don't know what his range is. I'm not yeah. really like, worried about losing. If I'm losing, I'm losing. Yeah, I'm just, just my hands so too be good. It. Yeah, but I'm I'm just would. I f- it's a draw. It's a draw heavy board. There's a lot of gut shots. There are flush draws. Although we have the king and diamonds in our hand as Mateos. So also we're not really afraid of a diamond. We're never folding on any turn card. We know that the stack to pot now is set up where it seems like a really easy check call if we want to do it on the turn. Yeah, Mateo, I, think, like, I think I like it. Yeah, we should expect Badzikowski to shove the turn a lot if we just call because mm-hmm. it, whether or not he has a pure bluff or a draw or anything, he's setting up the stack to pot so that he'll have about 77% of pot if Mateos calls. Seems like, yeah, he's going to shove the turn a lot. So. so much, whether value or as a draw. And either way, we get to just snap it off. Yeah, so I like the call by yeah. him. but. What does the solver think about these decisions? Yeah, let's do that animation now. (laughs) So uh, somewhat surprisingly, the solver is more than okay with Makita three-betting the flop. The solver wants him to three-bet the flop 55% of the time, which is, you know, about 55% more of the time than I would be three-betting the flop with this hand. The thing that also surprised me, the solver actually wants him to do it at this uh, amount. It likes that significantly better than the shove amount, which is shocking to me. That I is, would think the solver would absolutely, if it's go, if it's going to raise, it would want to shove. That's that's strange. It is strange. Now it only slightly prefers the three bet for the sake of balance, and it does believe that the expected value of calling versus this three bet that's really small are negligible. Yeah. So it's a difference is negligible. Let's remember everyone is really short here, and so yeah. that plays into all of these decisions and why you can make these kinds of plays a little more often, right? Right. And without it being a big problem, you can't make a huge mistake right now with Ace Jack. And uh, if you're putting more chips. A little less surprisingly, the solver agrees with us on Adrian's call of the three, but it wants him to call the three bet 92% of the time. That makes tons of sense based on the stuff we said, yeah, stack to ratio and for everything. Sure. But anyway, let's head to the turn and see if this keeps getting weirder. Before we see what these wacky kids do on the turn, let's talk about Nitrogen Sports Poker, where there is sports gambling. There's casino games, Jonathan. And guess what? Everybody's favorite. There's poker. There's also no children allowed. That's accurate yes. and awesome and uh if you look at our twitter you'll see it there on the screen that's where you can get access to our exclusive poker guys monthly tournament you have to sign up for nitrogen using the link that we tweet out when we tweet about our hands if you do that you get access to our tournament which is a thousand buy-ins guaranteed we never really get more than 100 players so it's a great deal for you get on nitrogen get you some good stuff you all the stuff king of clubs on the turn Remember, we saw Reiner Kempa fold a jack in the small blinds. Adrian checks. Again, Makita bet the flop 75,000. Mateos check raises to 210. Makita then three bets to 345,000. Mateos calls, and here we are on this turn. It goes check, check. River is a nine. Adrian's hand is best. What does Makita assign Mateos' hand to be? We now just have a horrible decision to make. Uh, we can assume that Mateos is going to move all in here on the river with his full house. All entries in the feeder. Don't stop in the market. Go you do a total rewind. It's one of those spots, Jeff, where when you bet the flop on Jack 7 7 with the ace jack, you are either way ahead or way behind. Clearly, he was way behind, and that's what led to this moment with this raising war on the flop. How about this? We're going to check. This might just let Makita happily show down this loser with ace jack. Makita escape without losing any more chips. 
I would love a check back here. I'm happy to get the showdown considering what happened on the flop. So strange. Yeah, you could be missing out on value, but would a worse jack even call? And would Mateos ever play any sort of jack in that matter? Look at this. He's going to fire it out there. Clearly in his mindset, this is all for value. That's 590,000. Leave himself a little bit behind. saying this, but I'm just not certain. I like the way Makita played this hand. The milk Makita man. frustrated now after Mateo shoves. He knows he has the worst of it. chips in see the bad news wow so okay that's how makita badzikowski lost twenty five thousand dollars we're going to get to if he should have lost that twenty five thousand dollars that way first let's talk about his opponent adrian mateos who chose to check this river i don't know this is an interesting decision what do you think i am surprised uh to me this feels like a pretty straightforward shove uh, this is, the, I think, the very top of Mateos' range here. Literally might be the best hand he can ever show up with. We think he's going to three-bet all his pocket pairs when they're this short in this tournament setting um, when button opens. And so, like, he can't have better full houses than this, we don't think. Um, I, I think when you've got the top of your range, you want to move in here because you're going to have some bluff some of the time, right? Well, some certainly way. Mateos is going to be capable of bluffing when Makita checks back the turn. Right. And Mateos has plenty of draws in his range. He had to call with all of them against that tiny flop three bet. So it makes plenty of sense to have some bluffs. So that means we should probably also be betting with the top of our range. I agree. And like, it's balance. And more to that point, I'm concerned that if Makita is a, this weird player who's going to have a jack sometimes, which as we see he is, if he has a no kicker jack, which is queen jack and lower, I expect he's going to check back a lot of the time on the river because I don't see how he could expect to get value by betting those hands, right? Right. Like, he clearly thinks a jack is going to call him, so he's not going to try and bluff a jack, right. right? So if he's got queen jack, he's almost certainly going to check, right. we think. Right, but he certainly will consider calling if Mateo shoves with that right. hand. Exactly. Well, that alone is enough to make me really want to bet as Mateo. I agree. Instead, Mateos decides to check. So tricky, though. But it works out for him, as oh. we see. Should this have worked out for him? Big question. Should Badzikowski be betting the river here? Man, it's close. Um, I think it's like paper thin, but he should be betting. I like the bet ultimately because Adrian Mateos is the kind of guy who is going to hero a lot. Yeah, and, and to be clear, you're saying he's targeting mostly just weaker jacks. I think so. I don't know what else. Uh, then Mateos can... decided to check raise, which is weird. But, but you but, know, but they were short. So yeah. you could see him doing that. And then when he gets clicked back, he's like, I don't know what to do. I'm not going to fold, but maybe I shouldn't move in. Yeah. So he calls and then it goes check, check. And then he checks again because he's afraid. How does he get value? Right. Um, and then so I think we should try and get value from the Queen Jacks and any other Jack in the world because we beat all of them. Right. And I understand that thought process, especially because Adrian checked twice after the three bet on the flop. He checked the turn and the river. I would be slightly concerned about the King X of Diamonds playing this way, mm -hmm. which, of course, we're losing to at this point. But, you know, so be it with that type of hand. I think sometimes we have to against the elite players find spots for thin value. I think this might be one of those spots, but it's close. Also, I would expect usually the King X of Diamonds to bet the river, too. Right. Like mostly after it goes check, check with the pot, the stack to pot being what it is and all that. Usually a king is just going to move you. in. Yeah, that's river. that's a that's a very fair point. So and uh, how, how do you feel about the sizing, leaving himself with three blinds instead of moving in? Oh, man, it's so weird. It's so weird. It, I don't like it. I think I like a shove better. Um, I like it. The, the reason to 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 shove here is to just maximize your value against Adrian. All right. right. That's fair. But here are some reasons Go. why you might want to bet this amount. Sure. You leave Adrian with more chips. Yes. Adrian is also relatively short to start the hand. And Adrian 
if, if he calls here and loses, we'll be left with a seven blind stack versus being left with a four blind stack. That is significant. That's a big difference in maneuverability for Adrian. It might factor into Adrian's decision whether or not to call with a hand like Jack-10. It's I can't disagree with that. All right. Point number two is the whole metagame implication here. We've seen the elite players rely on this type of play a lot when they're short mm -hmm. recently in tournaments where they leave themselves with a little bit of, of chips left in their stack, whether or not they have it. So mm -hmm. this, this effectively makes it so that when they're bluffing, they still have a chance in the tournament. Instead of being all in and being completely destroyed, they still have, in this case, three blinds left. If, let's say if Badzikowski had a missed diamond draw. Right. And he, he would still have three blinds left and still have a, at least a tiny chance in the tournament versus a 0% chance. So... For the sake of the times when he's going to be doing that as a bluff and for value, he wants to try to get thin value in this time to and, and say to Adrian, I'm a guy who can have a bluff here. Yeah. I mean, those are really good points. I like both of them. Yeah. Um, that said, I do like your point of why don't we just get all the money because Adrian's probably still going to call a similar frequency with the Jack-10 and Queen-Jack. My belief is that he's calling with the Jack either way, and we're making this bet because we think we're beating him. Well, this is clearly a value bet, right? Um, we know it's a value bet because he bet called. Like, yep. I guess it doesn't have to make it a value bet, but it, it is in this case. Uh, so I think it's worth the extra three blinds, but those are really good counterpoints, honestly. Yeah, and uh, whether or not it makes sense for Makita to make this bet, he does, of course, get moved in on yes. by Adrian. And now he's in the torture chamber, the vice, the worst of all places. He's like in the bathroom of a, of a giant ogre and the ogre doesn't see him and he's stuck in the I toilet. Disagree. You don't I think don't he's think stuck in the is, toilet? I don't think this is a, such a, such a torturous place. You are beat. You can fold. Okay. You have three blinds left but or whatever. But it's a bit torturous to have a hand that you considered a value hand now be getting shoved on getting 13.2 to one. Yeah. And be like, ah, oh, well, I guess I never, never win. But Makita thinks he wins often enough to call. See, that's the thing that's weird. Yeah. Like, that means Adrian has to be bluffing here one of every 14.3 times or something, right? Yeah. Like, I don't believe that's the case. I'm not saying Adrian maybe is never, ever going to bluff in this case. I believe at some point down the road, Adrian, maybe even Adrian has bluffed in this case before. Maybe, although I'm not aware of it. Maybe. I'm not aware of any elite player in the last, like, 10 years making this play Eventually, as a bluff. it's going to be a play, but it's yeah. probably not going to be a play enough for to justify this call not even close not yet right when it becomes more standard then everyone's gonna have to bet call this spot every time right now i think everyone can very reasonably bet fold this spot exploitatively and not worry about it i think that's got to be the play let's see what that dang solver says about it yeah well yeah as Look far as the river is concerned certainly adrian is supposed to move all in according yes, to the solver of course. which you know that makes tons of sense to us we don't really need to elaborate on that it was very interesting that he checked uh, it also wants Makita to check the majority of the time on the river, about 55% of the time. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, uh, which I, I understand going for thin value, but I also do understand the check. It's it's definitely okay with him betting, though. It's fine with, with Makita taking a shot for thin value here on the river, right? So oh. that's good. Of course, Adrian, mm -hmm. it wants Adrian to move in. And then, very interestingly, the solver wants Makita to call 85% of the time. I don't think it's that interesting. I mean, this this is why. Because the solver is playing against itself. Right. And so the solver makes sure it's always balanced. The yep. whole thing about the solver is balanced. So it knows it has bluffs. Right. And so that means it has to call some of the time with something. Yeah, so. whereas in practice, it would be kind of absurd to call 85% of the time because of right. exploit. Because you're just, it's yep. no one is ever bluffing enough for this to be the case. Not currently. Again, well, this may change. The solver would have lost just as much. Yes, it would have. So this had, with elite players, some of the more surprising decisions we've seen in a long time, I would say. The three bet on the flop. Absolutely stunning to me. Yeah, tell us what you think about that. A three bet click back. Even though the solver liked it, I'm like, huh? I'm like, what? Yeah, so there's that. Of course, the river play where Badzikowski bet calls it off in a spot where we think Mateos is still never bluffing. We don't think these guys are bluffing there yet. That will eventually change. So we don't like that either. Do you agree with us, or do you think we are whack? What would be whack of you would be to not buy our book. Because if you look in the description of this video here, there's a link to the pokerguys.net. That's where you can get our book. You can get it in ebook form, and you can get it in paperback form on Amazon. It's a great book, Jonathan. It's a fabulous book, Grant. It's got 37 different hands that we break down, we analyze in text conversation. It's a fun read. It's a fast read. It's enjoyable. There's jokes. There's also beautiful illustrations and a lot of hardcore poker analysis. Yeah, go to thepokerguys.net and get the book. And if you like this video, make sure you subscribe.